Hey everybody, get into this little worship with me. We just thank God on today. So, hey y'all, I first of all want to greet y'all with a holy hug, a virtual hug through the screen. And I just want to say if you are tuning in, I thank God for you. Um, if you're new, welcome to my channel, welcome to my page. Here we are God-centered. We walk by faith, not by sight. We um, really just praise God and just thank God. Um and welcome if you are not new here if you've been kicking it with me welcome back y'all welcome back i love y'all thanks for supporting um if you have not yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel like my channel you know hit a thumbs up um and we just gonna thank god for the word on today because this is the long awaited video probably not for you but for me um this is the video that will be going towards the 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 dream that I had um about your name being noble amongst men. This is the um I pretty much kind of like gave the interpretation basically well the symbols of the dream, but this is kind of like I guess like deeper revelation in what God is really saying, what I had to deal with um when I had this dream. Like I had to actually go seriously in repentance and I'm constantly repenting, not just on this one particular dream, but things like this kind of like happen to me in my dreams more often than not. And it's not a good thing, you know, um, and God has revealed to me that is not good. So every time it does happen, I do repent. And but God has revealed to me, God has released me to release this word to y'all because I sat on it for a while. When I did come back to release the word, I believe it was like two weeks ago. I did the whole video. I went to upload the video and it just disappeared. Like and that the rest of that week I was discouraged. I was like, Lord, like and that happens more often than not. That's just like we putting out a word that the enemy don't want it to go out. But this particular time, I was like, this word was so heavy. I know that the enemy was mad because he is just being exposed. The Lord is just exposing the enemy. That's all. But then I went to doubting myself. And, you know, the Lord had to speak to me like, Ash, like, you're doing the right thing. Keep going, you know, because God is telling me that. By me coming on here, getting here, you know, getting on here and being um, transparent and honest and real, not just about my dreams, but about my life. Because, like, I'm telling my testimony, like, in my dreams, like, and my testimony, like, is just unraveling. Like, I'm just telling my dreams. And by me telling my dreams, my testimony is unraveling piece by piece. And the Lord is also speaking to us as well by his word. So I just give glory to God. And God is like, Ash, don't give up. Like, I have sent you on this mission. Like, you know, even when God sent us to do a thing, we have to remember that it's God-centered, number one. And we have to remember that it's not about us. It's about the people that the Lord is calling. It's about the people that God is calling nearer and closer to him. 
because we can say that we know God, but God is saying there is like really one main way to actually get to me, to me, to me. And that is through my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you have not looked at that last, um, what that video is called, your name is being noble amongst men. Go ahead and look at that video because this is, uh, the interpretation of and the what is God saying about that particular dream. Um, but I think I want to retitle just this piece um, as the invitation. Like your name is being made noble amongst men, but the Lord is still inviting us to him. So the scripture that the Lord has given me, and it's crazy because like three nights ago, I was asleep and I put my Bible app on, on, um, the book of Proverbs. And when I was in my sleep, I was sleeping. And I kept, I, I heard a certain thing in my spirit. And when I heard it, I jumped up and I replayed the actual scripture. And I had to write the scripture down because I know that was the Holy Spirit speaking to me concerning this particular word. Like I am downloaded with word full proof. Like I'm downloaded bulletproof, like bulletproof with the word, like, God don't be playing like the Lord when he ready to tell you something. Best believe he going to give you some words to back it up. So I will be coming from Isaiah 55. Um, and song, not songs, but Proverbs 23. And we will end it with Psalms 23. We all know that. We all should know that. Um, Isaiah 55. I'm going to go ahead and read it through the message version first. And then I'm going to try and break it down the way that the Lord has given it. If I'm moving too fast, I apologize, y'all. I am on my lunch break. I may have to come back and do a, 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 um, a second set after I get off of work the way that the Lord, however the Lord will lead me. But I'm just being led by the Holy Spirit. I don't want to rush too bad because this word right here is so meaty. Like when I say meaty, I'm not just talking about, you know, how juicy it is. I'm talking about it's so full of word. I'm saying it's so full of the word of God. Scripture. Everything God gives me, best believe I'm coming, is backed up by scripture. I don't make none of this stuff up. I don't have my own ideals. You know, God give me revelation, but they are only in part. And even the revelation that he gives me in part, it has to be backed up by the word of God. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to read the text, Isaiah 55 through the message version first. And it reads. And it reads, y'all. Verse 1 starts. Hey there, all who are thirsty, come to the water. Oh, that's not the message version. I'm tripping, y'all. Sorry. Let me go ahead and pull it up on the computer. See, I was supposed to be ready. I thought I was ready. Forgive me, y'all. I thought I was ready. Okay, here it goes. Here, here it goes, though. Hey there, all who are thirsty, come to the water. Are you penniless? Come anyway, buy and eat. Come buy your drinks. Buy wine and milk. Buy without money. Everything is free. Why do you spend your money on junk food? Your heart earned cash on cotton candy. Listen to me and listen well. Eat only the best. Fill yourself only with the finest. Pay attention. Come close now. Listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nourishing words. I am making a lasting covenant commitment with you. The same that I made with David. Sure, solid, enduring love. I set him up as a witness to the nations. Made him a prince and leader of the nations. And now I'm doing it to you. You'll summon nations you've never heard of, and nations who've never heard of you will come running to you because of me, your God, because the Holy One of Israel has honored you. Verse 6 and 7 is where um, I'm going to end, and I may pick back up. I may. Verse 6 and 7. Seek God while he is here to be found. Pray to him while he's close at hand. Let the wicked abandon their way of life and the evil their way of thinking. Let them come back to God who is merciful. Come back to our God who is lavish with forgiveness. Y'all, 
I urge you again, if you have not looked at the video that is called Your Name is Being Made Noble Amongst Men, go ahead and look at the video. I don't have time to go back and tell y'all the whole dream. I don't have that type of time, y'all. So I, 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 I hope you go ahead and look at the video because if you're listening to this, it may sound good, but you won't really have the full knowledge of what the Lord is saying because you did not listen to the first part. So please go ahead and listen to the first part. So that is really an invitation from the Lord Jesus Christ to let you know, to urge you, to admonish you, to really let you know that everything that you need is in the Lord. Like the things that we go and buy from man is not, it's only something that's temporary. It's not something that will give us life. It's not something that's going to keep us. It's not something that's going to sustain us, you know? And in my dream, I did mention in the beginning of my dream, cause like I had like a one dream, but it was like in three parts. It was like broken up in three parts. And in the first part of my dream, I was met with a, a, a man that handed me some money. And when he handed me this money, I felt in my mind like, why am I being given this money? I didn't have to do nothing for it. And we know that money is like a, a symbol of riches. Money is a symbol of wealth. Money is a symbol of having something that I can take, that I can go and buy with that money, you know, which is like a symbol of riches. Like, so I was like, because in my past life, like I said before in my other video, in my past life for like two years, and I wasn't raised this way, y'all. I just fell into this trap because it was my way of living at that particular time because I did not have what I needed to have, like my necessities of life, which was the Lord Jesus Christ, really my source. I didn't have that as my source. I did. Like I knew God. I was raised up knowing God. I was raised up knowing the Lord. But at that particular time in my life, I was at the lowest state that I've ever been. So I was selling my body or whatever like that. And this particular person who I was selling my body with, I wasn't selling my body for no cash. Let me put it like that. It was free. I was just giving it away. Not because I enjoyed the fact of me doing what I was doing, but that particular person, I liked it, that person. So when this person, this person, the person that was the actual man that was in the actual dream who handed me the money was the guy from Plug Love. I forgot his name. I think his name is Myrtle, I think. The big black guy from Plug Love who fell in love with the girl who the girl fell in love with. It was him, but the spirit of this person was the spirit of the person who I used to mess with back in my little days when I was in the streets, okay? So when this person gave me this money, I was looking at the spirit. I wasn't looking at his actual, his actual physical appearance was the person from Plug Love, the movie. But when he handed me the money, I saw the spirit of this person, which was the spirit of the person that I used to entangle myself with. And I really, really liked this person, y'all. There was nothing. And I really didn't really know him, like, personally. I just liked him. Like, everything about him, I liked it. Like, it was just something. But he did not like me like that. He didn't like me at all. Like, it, you know, I know he probably thought I was cool. But as far as liking me the way I liked him, I know that was a no-go. But I did not care. Like, I didn't care. Like, I was in a world, y'all. So, um, I was like, I ain't got to do nothing for this money. So when I heard that, I heard a voice say, come, don't worry about that. Come with me. So when I went with the, this, whatever this voice was, cause it was a voice that I heard. So it, the dream shifted to me with a couple, it was a man and a woman and that was preparing like a feast for me. Right. And I'm going to go to Proverbs 23 because in my sleep, this is what I had heard, like the scriptures. And when I heard this the other night, I was like, oh my God. So the whole time I've been waiting to put this video out, the Lord was waiting because he had more things to give me, more scriptures to give me. So when I heard this in my sleep the other night, Proverbs 23 verses 1, it starts with verse 1. I think I'm going to stop at verse 8. It says, when thou sit to eat, with the ruler consider diligently what is before thee and put a knife to your throat if thou be a man given to appetite be not desirous of his dainties where they are deceitful meat labor not to be rich cease from thine own wisdom wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not good 
for riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Verse 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, says he to thee. So this scripture is saying, this person, this evil person is telling this other person to eat and drink. That's what he's saying to the other person. But God is saying, but his heart is not with the other person. The person that's telling this person to eat and drink, his heart is not with the other person. The other person's heart is on the, on the side of the Lord. But this person who is offering this food to eat and drink is not of God, right? So it says, verse 8, the morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Y'all, when I tell you I can't make this stuff up, in this dream, these people had sat before me. Like, they was in the kitchen preparing, and I was sitting, like, off watching them, like, prepare this meal. I did not know that they was cooking for me, right? I didn't really even realize that they were in the kitchen cooking. They backs were just turned in the kitchen, and they were just at work, like, at work, at work. And even in the dream, it really didn't present itself to me as the kitchen. It was just their backs was turned and they would, I just seen them working, right? They were preparing something. I can't say that they was cooking. I can't, I ain't go, I can't, can't even sit here and say that they was working. They was cooking in the kitchen because I ain't see them take out food, slice it up, dice it up, put it in the pots and cook it. I just seen that their backs was turned to me and they was preparing while I was sitting and watching them, right? So... By this time, they had the lady had it had done walked over to me. She like her and the man had then like motioned to me, and before I knew it, when I came to where they were, it was like a big old table set before us, and it was like a feast of food on the table. So there was like fixing their plate, like they was fixing. I guess they was like fixing my plate too because it was kind of like one of those moments, like what you see in the movies. Like we never did it in our household. Like we never put the food out on the table. It's just the way I grew up, you know. We never put the food out on the table and we never had like the big spoons and the big forks like fixing the plates and then put the food in front of us to eat. Like that's how it was. Like I was being served. Like the person that had cooked this big old meal, they had done laid it out on the table and stretched it out before me. And like, they was about to serve me with this food, right? So I'm looking and I'm in my head. I'm like, I'm not hungry. That's what I'm saying in my head. But I did not say that like out loud, like in my spirit. I was like, but I'm not hungry. So I just watched this lady fix all this food. And then we ended up shifting right into another, another like, setting like so in my third setting we i was sitting down um in my third setting we were actually walking off from the second setting like from the table or whatever we were walking off and i noticed that when we were going into the third setting i was walking with a big crock pot in my hand and it if anybody know me personally see you might know that i like to i'm sorry y'all i'm so sorry See, if, if anybody know me personally, people know that I like to cook. I never, growing up, I never liked it to cook. I never, I always liked it to eat. Like, if you was going to cook for me, that was great. The only time I cooked is if I had to cook. Like, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, I always liked it for people to cook and I just eat what they cook because I always thought that, you know, I, I'm all right, but, you know, I love other people's cooking. I You know... And I was just a foodie, so I love food. But lately, I've been getting into the habit of cooking, like cooking all the time, cooking big meals, and it's just me by myself. But I just be cooking, cooking, y'all. But I don't feel like I'm the best cook, but I've started cooking. And anybody that knows me personally know that I you I love a crock pot, right? So the la this lady had them put a like gave me a crock pot i don't remember her handing me this crock pot but i can just assess like when i woke up like when i was assessing my dream and the lord was giving me revelation and interpretation of my dream you know i was i i, I seen that i had a big crock pot in my hand and when i looked inside the crock pot it was like, I didn't have to like to lift the lid up. Like I can just actually see what was in this crock pot. It was a lid on this crock pot, but in the dream, like it was just so vivid what it was on the inside of this crock pot. It just looked like some good old meat, y'all. I'm talking about some 
good old d delicacy meat like it just looked so good like and i love to cook my meat in the crock pot so but i didn't eat i didn't eat from the table and i didn't eat from the crock pot and when the dream shifted into the third part of the dream i was sitting down at a bus stop it felt like a bus stop to me because i used to ride the bus y'all I rode the bus for a very long time before I started driving, before God blessed me with the cars that I've had and what I have. So I know what it is to ride the bus. And I know the setting of like when you're waiting on the bus or waiting at a bus stop. And I end up sitting. So the first part, the first part, the first half of my third, it's, it was all one dream, but it was like three parts. So the first half of the third part of the dream, I found myself sitting down on the bench with the crock pot like in my hand like i'm sitting like this with the crock pot in my lap but all of a sudden i had like a sausage dog in my hand like it did look like a hot dog it looked like a sausage dog that's how good it looked you know the difference between a hot dog and a sausage dog that's how good that sandwich looked at this 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 sandwich this it was i don't want to say a, a sausage dog or a hot dog is a sandwich but it kind of like is y'all and it didn't look like a hot dog. It looked like a sausage dog. It looked so good and so... And it's not something that I eat because I don't eat sausage. If I do, it's turkey sausage. But turkey sausage looks so different from beef and pork sausage. Or I eat turkey dogs. But this particular dog, it looked like a, like a sausage dog. It looked so good and juicy. And when I looked up, I had this sausage dog in my hand. And I took one bite of it. And that was all. I just like took one bite. I was sitting there on this bench and I took like, I had this pot of meat in my lap. And when I kind of like looked up, the white, I'm calling them white people. They ain't even have no color, y'all. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, But when I looked up, they was there like kind of like with me, like in front of me, kind of like. I, I could say it felt like itself. it was provision. It felt like it was just like provision and um when i looked up like i had done took a bite of the sausage dog then i put my hand down because i'm like it's something something else like in my spirit like but um like something else like we're waiting on something like that's how i felt like in my spirit so i just took that one bite and it's not that the, the sausage dog was good like when i took the bite it really didn't have no taste to it it really didn't compel me to take another bite to eat the whole thing because if y'all remember in the beginning i wasn't never hungry in the first place not for food anyways not for that kind of food anyways i wasn't hungry for the natural food it's not you know, my stomach wasn't growling for it. Even when I seen it, it didn't make me want to eat it. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, all the food that was on the table, it was just... It, it's crazy. Like, I really have crazy dreams. And I, it's hard for me to explain it, but I hope that y'all are following along with me. So, so um, I want to get to the symbols and the interpretation because... What's next is y'all going to have to go and look at the video for the last actual part of the dream. We begin to get on buses. Like we got on like four different buses, five different buses. And every bus that we got on, we didn't have to wait. Like every time we would get off a bus, we would be getting like right on another bus. And like I said before, I used to ride buses. Like I used to ride the buses for a living. Everywhere that I had to go, I was riding a bus. Like real talk like if i had to go to grocery store i couldn't call nobody like you know i was at a time that's when god was like calling me to myself like the lord was sending me an invitation and i was following the lord and i was by myself and i didn't have much you know so i had to get on the bus and it was times where the lord was like you need to remain humble yeah you might have one person that you can call but save your gas money and buy your bus pass and get on the bus like so that's how it was like i was taking the bus everywhere if i had to go grocery shopping i was having like 10 to 15 bags in my hand getting on the bus off the buses walking where i need to go walking from home like all this kind of stuff like you know I i had to get it out the mud but the lord was with me the whole time y'all so and every time I would get on these buses, it was like people, they had to get up. Like the the, the lady and the man that was with me in the, the whole time in a dream, like every time we would get on the bus, they would summon people to get up. Like even if somebody was sitting in the seat, they would make them get up and I would sit in their seat. Even if it was like an empty seat, like 
on the side of this person, they wouldn't put me in an empty seat. They would put me in a seat that somebody was already sitting in. Like I was taking people's spots. I was taking people places, spaces and places and stuff. And I'm looking like, and I would just sit down and I'm feeling kind of noble. Like I'm feeling like I'm somebody, but in the back of my mind, I kept feeling like this don't feel like I was kind of feeling overwhelmed. I didn't feel wrong, but I was like, who am I to get this kind of treatment? Like, what's going on? Like, I was trying to figure out, like, who am I? You know what I'm saying? Who, what, what, why, what makes me so much more different from these other people? Not better, but different. So then the dream actually ended. So that's when the Lord was like, okay, like, it's a lot going on. And I was like, okay, God, what's going on? So the symbols, I already told y'all the first symbol of the guy, you know, I accepted it. I went into a covenant with this person in the dream and I accepted the money that he gave me, which was it to me, how the Lord showed me, it was a good thing that somebody gave me, but it didn't come from a good source. So basically the money was just dirty. Basically it was dirty money. Like, you know, and, um, when the dream shifted, you know, when these people put before me all this food, it tells you in Proverbs 23 that the the meat that comes from this person is not from the meat of God. It's evil. Like, it's, it, you know, you're putting yourself in a covenant with people who really don't have your best interest at heart. So when I looked at the dream and I looked from the outside looking in, I'm like, but God, they were like show for me they were making provision they were and you know it's going to be people in your life that's going to do that for you but you have to check the source you got to check the spirit behind it you got to check and see if their spirit is right it what is the reason that they're doing it are they trying to get you to do the work for them are they trying to make your name noble for their behalf you know and that's what i had to assess and i was like lord like and it had me to it had me for a long time, it had me to, into a state of repentance because I was like, Lord, that means I've entered into a covenant with the devil. Like, see, I'm a very deep thinker, like, but it is deep like that. I don't want to water down what the Lord told me because it's serious. Like, we have to really think about the agreements that we're going into. See, see, people think that it's only one way to enter into the cup into a covenant with the evil one is that you got to take some blood and sign your name with the blood with the pen. No, that's a lie. You can just enter into a covenant with the with the opposing force just by agreeing. And a lot of times you have to think about what is agreeance. You don't necessarily have to say yeah or no verbally to agree. You can verbal, you can agree non-verbally. You could agree with your body language, you can agree with your actions. So in this dream, I was basically agreeing with them and I didn't even know what I was agreeing with them with. No, I did not eat from the feast that they gave me, but the hot dog that just mysteriously appeared in my hand because they, I don't remember them handing me that, to be honest. And I don't know if y'all caught that, but I didn't mention that in the video that they handed me this hot dog. I mentioned when I looked up, I had a sausage dog in my hand, okay? And I bit it. That's just like when Adam and Eve, when they bit the forbidden fruit from the tree, and this just popped up in my mind. So this ain't that but the Holy Spirit giving me new revelation. That's just like when, when not Adam and Eve, well, they both did bite, but Eve took the first bite. Eve took the first bite, and she gave it to her husband. But even still, it don't even matter who was right and wrong because they was both wrong. They both ate the meat, the food that they were not supposed to eat. God said, don't even eat from this tree at all. It's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They were supposed to eat from the tree of life. Y'all, that's a whole nother word. Y'all, God gave Adam the instructions to eat from the tree of life. Not the tree of knowledge of good and evil. When you eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, then guess what? You become naked. You become exposed. Not just exposed that you ain't got no clothes on, but exposed to the spiritual world around you. You're opening yourself up. Because you, you're looking at these people walking around and you think that they just made of flesh and that's all. Come on now. So I was like, well, Lord, what about 
when I got on the bus and they were directing the people to get up and I was like, kind of like noble on the bus and famous. He was like, yeah, he was like, but that was from the world though. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, I tried to convince God. I. I didn't talk back with him verbally, but in my heart, I was trying to figure out this thing because I didn't want to feel like I was wrong for entering into an agreement with the enemy, right? And I don't, I still don't know what that agreement was, but you know what? It's time for us. And if you don't know, and if you're just a baby Christian, you're a Christian still on milk, please, I admonish you to get in the word of God, get around some people that's really going to preach the true word. That's not going to water down God's word. That's not going to pick certain scriptures to preach on, to teach on, to, to read about, you know, get around somebody that's going to tell you the truth. Cause right now I'm telling y'all the truth. I'm telling y'all the truth. And God spoke that truth to me and I had to take it for what it was, but guess what happened? I repented. And I bind up whatever evil work it was that Satan had for me, his minions, his witches and warlocks. Because that's what that was in a dream. They covered themselves up to be these great, this great couple, this great man and woman, this great, y'all. The woman was doing everything in the dream for me. The man stood on the side of her. When you think about Adam and Eve, what Adam was just chilling in the background. Minding his business. Eve was calling the sh shot, so to say. Eve was like in a whole nother world. Y'all, this thing is so real. And after I repented, God was like, Ash, you, you my daughter still. I'm not going to break my covenant with you just because you went into agreement with you. You was blinded. You didn't know you. But, you know, in a physical, you know better. You know my word. But. Like I've said before in plenty of my videos, the enemy comes to us in our dreams while we are asleep. Because when we are asleep, that is our weakest state of mind. Because we are asleep. We are tired. We're getting rest. Our body is asleep, but our spirit is not. So the enemy comes to sow tears while we are asleep. And that's what he did. And he was like, Ash, I forgive you. But you learn from this. Continue to get in my word because when we're eating something that is not of God, we have committed spiritual adultery. Some dreams could be about sex. Because when y'all be, people need to know what wet dreams is too. But this ain't even about what, I'm, what God gave me. But, you know, spiritual adultery is when we're taking food, when we're taking what it is that is not of God from, from another source that is not of God. We have already committed adultery against God in the spiritual sense, in the spiritual realm. It can happen too in the physical realm with our physical bodies. That's why he said that your body is a temple of the Lord. Do you not know that you've been bought with the price? So I'm going to take it back to Isaiah 55 when it says, come to the water. The Lord is inviting us. He's in giving us an invitation and inviting us to come to the water. Who is the water? We know that the Lord is the living water. The Lord is said, come to me, come to the water. The living water is what? It's life in abundance. It, it flows. When you turn on the faucet of water, what does it do? It flows out. It flows out. What do you use water for? To quench your thirst. <laughs> Y'all. It says... If you are penniless in the message version, in the King James version, it said, you who have no money, come by and eat. So the Lord is saying, come to me, come get, come get whatever you need from me. If you hungry, come. If you thirsty, come. Come and buy and eat what it is that I want to give you on this side of the river, you know? And... He's saying when, when, when the Lord is saying buy, he's not saying buy with money. How that person in the dream offered me the money. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because I was like, how am I going to explain this to your people, Lord? So the Lord is saying you don't have to take no paper money, no, no, no worldly money, no physical money to come and buy what I am trying to offer. When I looked at buy... Because I had to go to all kind of resource to see what the Lord was saying. Because I already knew what the Lord was saying in my spirit. But I had to have backup with what God was saying in his word. So I went to the definition of buy. 
on Google. And yeah, we know that one of the definitions is to purchase, to acquire something by paying for it. But there is also another definition that says to get your hands on or to lay hands on or to get a hold of. So that's what the Lord is saying. He's not saying come and buy with money. Because you can't buy nothing with God for money. You can't bargain with the Lord with your money. You cannot. That's trying to sell something to God. No. Everything we get is without a price from the Lord. The Lord, we he's saying we don't have to pay nothing. Salvation is free. That is what the Lord is offering. Salvation. And he's saying that you can get this for free. And not just salvation. When you when I give you salvation, I'm going to be able to nourish you. I'm going to be able to fill you. I'm going to be able to replenish you with the food and the drink that I can give you. Not what, what man will give you, right? So God is saying, the Lord is saying, come and lay hands on the things that I have for you. Get a hold of these things that I have for you. You don't have to use your money for this. Come and touch it. All you have to do is touch it. If you can just put your hand on it, you have it already, right? So it says, without money and without price, why do you spend your money for those things that are which are not bread? So if y'all following with me, this person gave me money and I was trying to figure out why this person was giving me money, what I needed the money for, right? I wasn't trying to look and see what I was going to buy with it. The first thing that went through my mind was, why am I being given money? Like, I, nobody has never gave me money before. I'm not, like y'all, my life has been hard. But I'm not complaining. I give glory to God because now I don't have to. I'm not in need for nothing. When I was in need, nobody gave me money. My mama always looked out for me. When I really, really needed something, my mama knew, you know. But when I was in the dating scene, I really, I can't even call them, them I'm going to call them niggas. And whoever take offense, it is what it is. But when I was dating them niggas in the world, because that's what it was. They was niggas in the world. They was for the world. They was community. When I was dating them ninjas, they did not give me money. And I was a good girl. I was a good girl. This was before I was turned out. Before those two years I'm telling y'all about, like, I was good. Like, I was, you know, I never dated somebody that did anything for me. I was always the giver. I never had nothing. I never even had real love. I never even received no ounce of real love. And the one who really did give me that love, it wasn't real enough that he could keep to himself and really be just for me and not no other woman. You feel me? So, the Lord is saying, why are you taking money and trying to buy bread? What? I got the bread that you need. Y'all, in that in the in the in the in the dream, the Lord was showing me that this person that gave me money, it was ultimately so that I can buy this food from these demons cuz that's what they were in the dream. I'm telling y'all, people just because they look like regular people in dreams that they are demons or they are just a representative of something or somebody that you know but they are pawns so and i ended up buying food in that dream i ended up taking a bite of that that sausage dog the lord was like yeah you didn't eat from the feast from the spread that they put before you but then you bit of that sausage dog you took one bite of that sausage dog and you realized that that wasn't the bread that wasn't the food for you it not it's not that when i bit the sausage it was nasty it's not that i was didn't want it no more or you know it was just that when i bit it that was all i needed at that moment i didn't want it like you know you get what i'm saying but by me accepting that money, because when he put the money in my hand, I did not give it back to him. I went off to the other section in my dream. You get what I'm saying? Like, y'all, this thing is so deep. Like, the enemy comes to sow tears among us. And we have to be vigilant, and we have to be watchful, and we have to continue to pray. Because guess what? Even in our dreams, we, are, we sin in our dreams. And if you don't believe that then by all means <laughs> whatever <laughs> i'm not even finna go back and forth because if we can send in our mind by a thought oh you sinning in your dream you probably can't even remember your dreams because guess what because the enemy has thrown dirt on your dreams so you won't remember them so you can stay in covenant with whatever it is that he have you locked in and locked up under and locked in with 
man. Anyway, so um, the money, the food. So, and, and, and the Lord is saying, you know, listen carefully to me. Only eat what is good. The only thing that is good that I, is, is what I give you. So only eat of the bread and the wine and the and the the water that I give you, which is what the word of God. He not saying don't go into the restaurant and eat. He not saying don't go to the grocery store and buy the food so you can prepare for your family. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about when it comes to eating from people, the word. This is the only word you eat from. When it comes to accepting truth from somebody. You better make sure the truth that they're trying to give you comes straight from the word. Whatever it is, you got to check the source. What source does it come from? If it don't come from this source, chunk up the deuces. Easy as one, two, three. Chunk up the deuces and holler. Period. Like it is coming to a point where if the Lord is giving me this type of dream, that means he is near and he's calling us. And we can't no longer sit around and play with the enemy. Because he trying us. You see how the enemy trying me, trying us like this? He think we stupid. So the Lord say, Ash, go ahead and let the people know what time it is. So that's what I'm doing. Verses 3 through 5, it says, To incline your ear and come to me. Here in your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. So the Lord is said, don't listen to them people who are trying to offer you this stuff because it look good. <laughs> and I'm laughing because in a dream, everything looked good. If you don't, if you remember earlier in my video, I said, I kept asking the Lord, well, Lord, what does this mean? Because it, it, it looked good. It, they was being nice to me. They was, you know, they had them cooked for me. They had them did this and that. Even when we got on the bus, they looked out for me like. The Lord is saying he want to make a covenant with us. It says that we need to incline our ear to him and come to him so that our soul shall live. Because guess what? Just because we're doing some good stuff in the world, that don't mean we really living for God, if I can be honest. I, I'm living for God. You know, my work's I not so that I can get the glory from it. It's because the Lord gets the glory from it. Because what I do, I do unto the glory of God. No, I'm not perfect. I'm just telling you. I just told y'all a dream of how I done partook in a whole nother thing. But I'm just letting y'all know that when you are covered, you are covered. But you have to be careful who you working for. Everything that you do, you got to be careful who you doing it for. Because unknowingly, you may go into a secret contract with an agent of the darkness and not know it. In my dream, that's what I did. I was used. I didn't realize that until God had to really open up my eyes. And I had to have a heart to heart with the Lord. And I had to be like, Lord, I am sorry. Because I know one thing. One thing I do know is that when you do eat in dreams, is witchcraft. I already knew that. So I already knew that. Me just biting that piece, me accepting that money as a covenant, I already knew that was a covenant. I, You know, but it was like when I got on the bus, like when I was being like paid attention to, like I was being ch looked out on, like they was looking out for me. The Lord was like, that wasn't good. It looked good, but it wasn't. That's just like when people in the entertainment industry, and that's not the only industry that that they sell and they sold in, but that's like one of the biggest industries that they're actually, in. we see it as the masses. We see it before our eyes. People want to call it conspiracy theories, but conspiracy theories, y'all think it's a conspiracy, but it'd be real. It's not just nothing made up, it's real. And the Lord was like, just because somebody could take care of you and make you feel good and make it make you feel like you somebody, that you got to check the source. You got to check the power source because powers are roaming around in the earth, in the atmosphere. And you got to check the source of those powers. Ephesians 6, my sis just spoke on his word the other day. My sister Deidre. Hey, Deidre, I, sis, I know you be watching my videos and I thank you too. I thank you for supporting me. Um, 
And it's like when God is speaking the same thing in the earth, that means that his word is really being amplified. It's his word is being magnified to a point where he's trying to let us know, hey, hear what I am saying. I am sending people out. The least people. God said that I will... What he said, how did he say, I will use the foolish to confine the wise, to confound the wise? Like, just because we may look like this, don't judge a book by its cover. Nah. Because guess what? We had to go through this in order to come and, come and preach y'all this word. In order to come and share this word to y'all. And the Lord is saying right now, incline your ear to me. Hear, hear what God is saying and your soul shall live. Your soul shall live. Because guess what? Your soul got to go somewhere. Your soul got to go, go somewhere. When it's all over with. It says, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. So when we make our mind up to come into the Lord, you know, to really sup with the Lord, you know, to really dine with the Lord, to really just accept him, you know, to even just answer the open door, answer the invitation. It's the open door. It's the, it's a great invitation. That's what it is. Uh, the invitation. He said, even if you just accept it, I'm going to make that covenant with you, but I can't make a covenant with you. If you have not accepted me. Yeah. You may have fall short. Like I fell short in my dream. But at the end of the day, the Lord is still near while we will call upon him and he is near. Right. So he said, indeed, I have given him. He talking about David before that. I'm sorry. says the sure mercies of David. The same covenant he talking about he going to make with us is the same covenant he made with David. So he's saying, indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people. So the Lord wants to make us a witness once, not want, but the Lord wants to make us a witness to his people, the people. When you think about the Constitution, see, I don't know about all this other stuff, like all this. I don't know about science and I don't know about history and I don't know about politics. And I'm not going to apologize because that's, I'm just not going to apologize for it. But the Lord is dealing with me on that type of stuff because, it, it, you know, in some stuff like that, you need to know what's going on. But I know in the Constitution, it says something about we the people, right? And God is saying he is giving us, he is raising us up as his people, his servants, his sons and daughters, his friends to be a witness to the people. Not just his people, but the people. The people. The people. We can witness to uh, amongst each other all day because we're in the same circle. But the Lord is saying, okay, the other people need it too now. So he's raising us up to be a witness to the people and a leader and commander for the people. For us. For each other. And he said, surely you shall call a nation you don't know. So it's people out there that we don't even know about, that we see in the world. And they are nations, but they are not under the nation of God, right? And he's saying that he is going to summon us to call a nation we don't know. Call people in into the sheepfold. Call people into the Lord. The Lord wants to use us in a mighty way to do a great work. When the Lord was here, he told his disciples that there is a greater works that we will do. Greater works than what he did. Not saying that we will trump, ever trump what the Lord did. We cannot. There is only one Lord. But he's saying that the things that he did in his days, we're going to do those as well. But we have to accept the invitation, right? We can't be eating this meat and water and bread from no, no other source, no other power, but who? Oh, the Lord. Okay? So... Um, he also said, and nations who we don't know shall run to us. It's going to be people that's going to be flocking to us, going to be looking for our advice. They're going to be looking for what we can do for them. They're going to be looking like how everything that the Lord do for us, the Lord will use us in that capacity. And Corinthians, he, it says that he has called us to be preachers, teachers, prophets, ministers of the gospel, like fivefold ministry, he has called us to be a part of the fivefold ministry. And just because 
you know, you might not, you can be a part of the five folk ministry, but that don't mean you got to be a, a preacher in the church with a microphone. You can be somebody who speak the word of the Lord on your job. You could be the, I keep saying it's the greatest customer service representative because I'm going to say this. I love customer service. When I worked in customer service, that's all I strive to be was my best. Right. So anytime that I go into the store or anytime I talk to somebody on the phone that's servicing me, baby, I'm looking at their customer service. I'm looking at how they talk to me, how well they service me, how well they do the things that they are doing for me, their job, their job. You know, God is saying that I am calling y'all into different sectors, you know. I mean, I'm calling y'all and that's, um, that's ministry. I'm calling y'all in ministry to ministry to minister. I'm calling y'all and I'm sending people to y'all who don't, who you don't even know, but you're going to be able to help these people. You're going to be able just like in a dream when those two people, the lady and the woman was seating me, like I was taking people's spots. They were sitting me down in other people's spots. Like I was being made a person of high standard, like you get what I'm saying? That's how they treated me in the dream. The Lord is saying that I'm sending people to you that you will be able to delegate. You're going to be able to do this, that, and the third with them. And not with your own power, but by my power. Not with your own strength, but by my strength. Not with your own love, but by my love. You know? By my righteousness, by my glory, all that good stuff. And it says, because of your Lord, your because of the Lord, your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. So the Lord is ready to glorify us. When I looked up glorified, because I know it glorify me because we glorify the Lord. Right. But when I looked at the, up in the dictionary, because I be wanting deeper revelation, the Lord said. The Lord, well, I'm going to say Google said it. But the Lord revealed it to me in the way of Google, right? Google said glorify. One of the synonyms of glorify meant what? Elevate. <laughs> so guess what? The Lord is getting ready to what? Move us on up. Y'all, I hope y'all paying attention. When I was on that bus, there was that those that couple, that man and that woman, whoever they was, they was putting me on a pedestal of elevation. They had put me on the pedestal, y'all. Every time the bus came, we was getting on one bus, getting off the other bus. I didn't have to wait. I did not have to do lift a finger. All I had to do was step on the bus. Every time I stepped on the bus, all I had to do was just stand there. And the lady and the man would go before me and they would tell the people. They would do like this. They would point at the people and tell them to get up and go in the back. I'm telling y'all, they will point at the people to tell them to get up and move over there somewhere. And when, if you never wrote the bus, but if you have wrote the bus, you know that when you get on the bus, the bus be packed, packed. I'm talking about the times where the bus would be packed. So every time we got on the bus, every time the bus, we would get on the bus, they was packed with people. And the Lord was telling me in the dream, that's how I'm going to use you. But I'm going to use you by my power, which is the power of righteousness, the power of holiness, the power of purity, the power of, of greatness. I'm not going to use it in the way that the what the people then was using it in because it looked good, but they was using it in a way of just like saying, here, this is what I'm doing for you. I'm making you noble. You know, man can make us noble. Man can give us a title, but the Lord is saying, I'm giving you my title so that when people do come to you, you'll be able to delegate in a righteous way. You'll be able to do my work in a righteous way. So, so, and I'm just going to read verses eight through nine. It says for my thoughts. And again, y'all, I'm in Isaiah, um, not verses eight through nine, but verses six through seven, the invitation, Isaiah 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. He will have mercy on him and to our God, and he will abundantly pardon Y'all, that's a whole mic drop. Ain't it? Can y'all agree with me that that's a whole mic drop? I'm sorry why I'm not looking at the screen because I'm clocking back into work. But that is a whole mic drop, y'all. The Lord just said we just, all we have to do is really seek him. Turn from our way. Call upon him while he is yet near. Call upon him while he can be found. Let the unrighteous man turn from his thoughts. 
Because guess what? The things that we think are unrighteous. We can't sit here and say that just because we call ourselves Christians and believers that we are not unrighteous. We do have unrighteous ways. And it leads, it starts with our thoughts. Even our thoughts can be a part of sin. And we have to turn away from that kind of stuff because God is trying to put us in position where, and we're not perfect. God know we're going to fall short. He know that. But God is saying that when we do these things, when we really, really take sup with the Lord, when we really sit down and have dinner with the Lord, when we eat with the Lord, his goodness and his mercies, his food, his wine, it says, come and buy wine and buy, 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 buy meat from me. Buy those things from me, the Lord is saying, not from man. You know, we can get that stuff from man. We can go and buy riches from man, dainties and meat and all this different kind of stuff. And then we can be made noble amongst men. That's a covenant with man. We have covenants with man. Our co some of our covenants with man are good. We have good reports with man. And they are of good sources because guess what? Their source is God. So you got to check your source. Like my sister Tamika LaFable, um, who I um, labor with, you know, she, she, she spoke a word. It was last year, I believe. She, one of her words was, check your power source. And that's what this word is saying in so many ways, like even my dream in so many ways is saying, you know, I know you done did this thing, this, that, and the third, but don't forget to check your power source. So we don't just check our power source on Sundays when we go to church, y'all. We don't just check our power source on Mondays because it's a new week. We have to check our power source daily, every day, continuously, every day, all day. We may get tired of checking our power source. But the Lord, he does pardon that, but it has to come to a point of time where we really, really, really want to be lined up and connected with the Lord. Straight up, no chaser. When I was in the world and I used to drink, I didn't drink with chasers. Those was for the rickies. Those was for the babies. This word right here, it start off with the milk. Because God was saying, the Lord was saying, come and buy milk and wine from me. What does milk do? Milk nourishes you what does wine do wine cleans you it purifies you it it it, it raises you up to a, a standard with god wines wine is like a threshing floor to the lord and my first sermon on here my first youtube sermon on here see i thought i was gonna come on here i'm gonna be honest with y'all i thought i was gonna come on here and just preach words that god gave me which that is the ultimate thing you know but I did not know I was going to come on here and be revealing y'all dr my dreams and what the Lord is saying. I did not know that. So the first word I came on here, it wasn't a dream that Lord gave me. It was a vision that the Lord gave me. But it was an ultimate word. And my first word was about what? New wine. That's what God wanted it wants to do with us in this season. Pour out new wine. That's what God want to do with us. God wants to pour us out new wine. You can't pour new wine into old wine skins. It's going to bust. It's going to bust. It's new wine. It's been filtered. I was Googling. I was, on, I was on YouTube a few weeks ago because I was still trying to wrap my head around what God was telling me. You know, because I know in the dream I was in the wrong, but I know God is a vindicator. I know that the Lord is a vindicator. In Isaiah 55, the Lord said that he will abundantly pardon us, right? So... I was on Google and I was trying to figure out because I know what wine does. I know the the wine of the Lord, not the wine, the spirits that you buy in the store. Because that's what they call spirits. And they call it spirits for a re reason. But I, that's a whole nother word. But, and I know what the wine does, what the wine is really used for in the Bible. But I wanted like another type of revelation, which is all the same. For this particular word, what God had given me versus the word that the first word he gave me on pouring new wine, Isaiah 55, Isaiah 65. So I came across this video on YouTube where this man, it was drawing out and he further was explaining it. And it was a video of three tanks. The first tank had, um, let me go to my notes because I tried to write it out in my notes. So I hope, hopefully... I explain it like the right way, right? So 
the first tank, there was like big old tanks, like just huge, gigantic tanks. Like the first tank, it was like a tank of, it had the wine and then it had like sugar and it had, um, what had in it? The wine, it had yeast and sugar in the first tank with the wine. In the second tank, it had, it was added, a refining agent was added to the second tank. So in the first tank, it just had yeast and sugar with the wine. In the second tank to the wine with the yeast and sugar, they added a refining agent. In the third tank, which is the final tank with the wine in it, it was actually pure wine that had been processed. So when I began to listen to the person who ex who was explaining the process of uh, creating wine, um, it was really the refining agent that really purified the process of creating the, the wine that we get when we go in and buy it, you know. And it's the refining agent that does the work that takes out all the, the yeast. You know, the stuff that we really don't need, you know, yeast, the leaven. Um, and I was like, wow, that is so dope. Like all the yeast, which is the dead cells, it falls to the bottom of the tank. So that means when you pour, you're just pouring out new wine, right? So that's what the Lord is saying. Let me come and pour you out new wine. Come and buy this wine from me. Because in the beginning, if y'all don't remember, it does say, Um, I know this ain't it. It does say coming by wine and milk. The version I'm looking at, oh, I don't even like this version because this ain't the King James Version. So it did leave out that one word, wine. Because I know in the King James Version, it mentions wine. I'm sorry, y'all. But Isaiah 55, I forgot what particular verse it mentioned it. Let me see. In verse 1, it says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come to the water, and he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money. Wine and milk. So, wine is like something that's been purified, that has been purified and poured out and ready to drink. So, the Lord is saying... Come get this good wine, baby, because I don't already purified you. I don't purify this wine. So you come to me. Let me come. You will come and sell me as salvation. You come, you know, and let me give you this wine. I'm going to give you this wine. <laughs> I'm going to give you this wine. Wine is like something that's been purified like wine comes from grapes and if we would do a diligent study on grapes and the reason why the lord say that we are the the branch and he's the vine is because on the on the branches that's where the grapes grapes bloom and blossom and grow or whatever you want to call it i'm talking about like it's a flower but that's where the grapes grow on the actual branch right and he's saying he's the vine and, 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 and God is like the vine dresser. He come and snip, 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 chop, 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 whatever it is that he needs to, to keep the garden looking good, to keep the grapes, um, you know, growing the way they need to grow and blase, squaze, squaze, you know, and the Lord is saying that, you know, you're growing and you're blooming into a, a nice, good grape that went. When you actually grow into the way that I need you to grow, I can go ahead and take you and I can press you down, you know, and I can squeeze you out and I can get the juice, the wine, you know, because grapes, it makes grape juice or it makes grape wine or it makes grape candy and all that. But the Lord is saying, no, we're not getting no candy from this. We getting all, all wine, baby, all wine, juice, juice is left with the bad sugar, wine. It's that sugar that the Lord going to give us, you know, and he's saying, let me go ahead and press you because in order to do the process of actual grape juice and, and wine, the grapes have to be pressed down. 
They got to be squeezed and pressed out. Like, in order to be poured, in order to be poured, y'all. In order to turn into liquid, the grapes got to what? Be smashed, okay? And that's what God is saying. Like, allow me to give you these things. Like, don't accept the things that I can give you. Don't get that from man. Don't glory in those things that man gives you because it don't last always. Like, when I was listening to secular music, I was I it was this song that I used to like. He it was the the rap artist called Polo the Don. And I forgot the actual name of the song, but it used to be like good things don't last forever, baby. Good things don't last forever, baby. And that's true. I was young singing that song and I knew what he was talking about in that song. Good things don't last forever. Those things that seem like they are good, they don't last forever. They don't. They don't last forever. And so we need to be trying to get what it is that the Lord has good for us. Not what man can give us. And, all, and God is saying the things that I want to give you, man can do a replica of it. They can probably try to duplicate it, but it's not going to be the real thing. It's not just because it look good and tastes good and feel good and seem like it's good. That don't mean it's going to be good for you. So check your power source. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug in and shout out my associate pastor, Bobby Brown, my associate pastor, Bobby Brown, my associate pastor, Bobby Brown from Beyond the Wall Outreach Ministries. He spoke on this last night about covenants. And when he spoke on this, it was, I was like, God, you, because God had already told me about covets and contract. It was something that I already knew about because I have to go through it when I'm dreaming. I have to go through breaking covenants and contracts about, you know, what I dream about and stuff like that. So, but when he preached on the covenant of grace, God was giving me his last confirmation because I did say this in another video that um, a lot of times God could tell us a thing and we can be feeling like we unsure about it and we keep going to God about his word and we're like, well, God, is it this or Lord, I'm not sure. Can you please tell me again? Like, can you please show me another sign? And that's what I was doing with God with this video. Because it's not that I didn't feel adequate. It's not that I did not feel comfortable. But I just wanted to make sure that I was delivering the word right. Because guess what? It still has to line up. Right? And because my dream was demonic. Because it came from an evil force. I did not want to water down what God was telling me. And God was telling me that yes, in my dream I did break a covenant. In my dream. In my dream. You know? And he was saying, yes, you were wrong in your dream, but you are able to recover from that because of my grace, the invitation that I'm offering you salvation, right? So I had been had this word for a very long time. I've had this word for a very long time. So when my associate pastor came with the word entitled a covenant of grace, I had already knew that God was giving me his, his blessing of releasing the um, interpretation what he was saying on that dream that I had a while back, you know, and I just bless God. I just bless God, you know, for his wonderful mercies. And I just pray that whoever this word is for, maybe you don't know, but now, you know, you know, maybe you didn't know that's what it meant when you were dreaming, or maybe you seen it, had a vision of something and you was wondering what it was or Maybe you seen it in the physical and you was like, Lord, I don't want no parts of it. Lord, you know, whatever it may be, you have to test the spirit. You have to try the spirit. You know, it's nothing wrong with trying the spirit. That is what God is saying too in this video. There are so many revelations in this video, you know, that God revealed to me. And God is saying that it's nothing wrong with trying the spirit, but don't entangle your spirit. When you try that spirit and you see the spirit for what it is, you take it up with the Lord and the Lord will reveal to you what you need to do. And that's what I had to do about this dream. Like I had to repent. And it's just going to be sometimes where God just gives us a revelation and gives us instructions. That's the word. And we got to take those instructions, instructions for what it is. Period. So... 
I just pray, Father, that um, this word really gives divine inspiration, first of all. Like, divine clarity, divine wisdom, divine understanding, divine knowledge, divine power. Because, Lord, we need your power in these days to be able to... Um, withstand, withstand the enemies of the devil, the, the, the evil doing of the enemy to withstand what the enemy is trying to do in our life. We got to be able to withstand that. And the only way we can do that is by your power, Lord, by your discernment. So God, give us discernment in this times, even when we're asleep, Lord God, give us discernment in our sleep, Lord God, God, give us like a a strength in our sleep to, to say no to those things. Give us a type of revelation, even in our sleep when we're dreaming, that we will know that this is not of God, that we don't have to partake in it, even if it look good, even in our waking life. Some things don't look good and we partake in it just because it look good and we can get temporary satisfaction or gratification from it but the lord is saying that's not so we don't have to go to that extent everything that we need is in the lord jesus come and buy all those who are heavy laden god in in the scripture god said everyone who thirsts come to the water not just one particular type of person everybody everybody and we just ought to thank God for the word on today. I even thank God for the word because I didn't even know how I was going to get through. But in this season, God is saying that, see, our faith, it works in conjunction with our trust. See, God is saying even just because you had good, big faith, now you have to walk in really expecting faith, like even bigger faith. Your faith got to really be radical. Like, because you can tell people all day you radical for Christ, but guess what? Your faith got to show that you're a radical. And we got to trust God that whatever God said, whatever God showed us, whatever he told us to speak, whichever way he told us to go, we just got to trust God that he will make provision. So that what that's what the Lord is saying. The word is all about provision, y'all. The Lord is ready to provide us provision. The only way we would get it if we come and dine with him, if we accept his invitation, that's when he will make us great among the people. Y'all read it in Isaiah 55. He said he will give us the sure mercies of David. It says, incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live. What profit a man to gain his, to, to gain, to, to, what profit a man to gain the world but lose his soul? So it says, incline to me, come to me, here in your soul shall live. I will make you an everlasting covenant by the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. God is trying to elevate us and raise us up in this season. And the only way we're going to be elevated in a way that will really make us great is if we do it through the Lord Jesus Christ. Come and get milk and wine from him. Milk is to what? Nourish the body. To grow us up in the Lord. Which is the, 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 the word. It's the word. But that meat is when you be heavy, heavy on the word. And the Lord is saying that milk, Um, some of us need to come off that milk. It's been too long and you still drinking milk. Come on. But he said, I can give you milk. Wine and meat. Come and get it from me. I love y'all. I pray that this word blesses y'all. I pray that, um, you know, that this word enlightens you. That it enlightens you. That you don't have to do what the enemy say. You don't have to go along with the plans that you know that God did not give you. Like, you don't have to agree to not, you don't have to agree to what you know in your spirit ain't good enough for you because what's not good enough for you that means the lord hand is not on it we deserve so much more and we desire more and the only way we can get what we need is from the lord period so god i bless your word god i bless you lord god and i just pray god that 
you you continue to raise us up in your word. And I pray that the people, Lord, accept your invitation. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I urge you to accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior. As your as the one who you want to have provision over your life. If you just believe that the Lord has died for you and rose again so that you may live. If you believe that the Lord has died for you and he took all the sins on the cross and he defeated death for you, then you are saved. You have accepted the invitation. Now go and do what it is that the Lord is telling you to do. To do. Go and have dinner with the Lord. Get in the word and know the Lord for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's people that, that, that around you that are waiting to help you with, in this walk. Because we are together. We are all doing this together. I love you all. And I bind up the hand of the enemy that want to come against my word. I bind up any retaliation spirit. I bind up any um, worker of iniquity in the name of Jesus. Uh, this word will go forth in Jesus name, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. I love y'all. Be blessed until next time.